Blog Talk Radio. Hello, my name is Elder Price, and I would like to share with you the most amazing book. Hello, my name is Elder Grant. It's a book about America a long, long time ago. It has so many awesome parts. You simply won't believe how much this book can change your life. Hello, my name is Elder Green. I would like to share with you this book of Jesus Christ. Hello, my name is Elder Young. Hello, did you know that Jesus lived here in the USA? You can read all about it now. Hello, in this nifty book, it's free. No, you don't have to pay. Hello, hello, my name is Elder Smith. And can I... Hello. My name is Doug Bundy, formerly known as Elder Bundy when I, too, rang doorbells a long, long time ago. But this is Voices from the Dust Radio for Friday, the 22nd day of November 2013. We welcome you to our show where we share the reason for the hope within us, the reason why the Latter-day Saints are Christians, and the reason why you should be, too. Yesterday's episode was more or less an introduction to the Witness of Joseph, which is the Book of Mormon uh, containing the voices speaking to us from their graves as though they were whispering low out of the dust in fulfillment of the words of the prophets of old, especially those of Isaiah in uh, chapter 29, where the Lord speaks of these things. Uh, We saw how these voices cry repentance and explain how America is a land choice above all other lands given to the descendants of Joseph as an everlasting inheritance by the Lord God of Israel, but taken from them and given to the Gentiles for a period of time so that the Lord could show his power unto the Gentiles while at the same time bringing judgment down upon his ancient covenant people for their transgressions. However, today we see that things have come full circle as the Gentiles reject the God of the land who is Jesus Christ and are themselves ripening for destruction, which the Lord said would happen as it has happened to all nations who have not possessed the land in righteousness but worked wickedness before him. On today's episode of Voices from the Dust Radio, we are going to learn more about the sacred records that play such an important part in this great drama, and we will see how Satan has worked and still works to corrupt and control these records so that he might keep the children of men in darkness concerning the plan of salvation and the wondrous works of God to bless his people and enlighten their minds. Um, All right, well, uh, you can find the text of the article uh, for today on our website, voicesfromthedust.org. Just go there and click on the menu item, The Witness of Joseph, and select the article, America, the Land of Zion, from the drop-down menu so you can follow along. All right, then, let's begin. At some point, not only... Will we have the records of the Jaredites, but we will also have the full record of Joseph, which, as the Lord revealed through the prophet Ezekiel, would one day be joined with the record of Judah as two testaments of Jesus Christ, joined together as one in the hands of the people. That is, when the two nations, the nation of Joseph, both Ephraim and Manasseh, and the nation of Judah, both Judah and Benjamin, become one nation again, their records and those of the other tribes of Israel, which will also be restored, the records of which also testify the divinity of Christ, will become one as well. Thus we can plainly understand from the voices of the dust as we read the following words of Mosiah, which... uh, uh, was spoken by his son Helaman, uh, or spoken to his son Helaman when he passed to him the records of Joseph, 
which uh, their fathers had brought with them from the land of Jerusalem and which he had with which he had been entrusted and now my son Helaman I command you that ye take the records which have been entrusted with me and I also command you that ye keep a record of this people according as I have done upon the plates of Nephi and keep all these things sacred which I have kept even as I have kept them for it is for a wise purpose that they are kept and these plates of brass which contain these engravings which have the records of the holy scriptures upon them which have the genealogy of our forefathers even from the beginning Behold, it has been prophesied by our fathers that they should be kept and handed down from one generation to another. Okay, I'm going to pause it here because we might not have made clear that these plates of brass were the plates that uh, Lehi and his family brought with them. Uh, they were family records and uh, and uh, they obtained them from Lehi's brother, Laban, at uh with great difficulty, though, but the Book of Mormon explains how they uh, finally obtained these records, and that they had, um, you know, the same uh, story uh, in it as uh, the same account, if you will, that we have in our Bible. But they had a lot more, and it was uh, more complete than what we have in today's uh, Bible, which is not been in the hands of the righteous but uh, in the hands of the wicked and and um, but these things uh these the records the, the, on the brass plates are to be kept then by the lord and preserved until a uh, future time uh when they will be brought forth and this is to confound the work of the devil but uh let's go on and and hear his explanation and be kept and preserved by the hand of the Lord until they should go forth unto every nation, kindred, tongue, and people, that they shall know of the mysteries contained thereon. And now, behold, if they are kept, they must retain their brightness. Yea, and they will retain their brightness. Yea, and also shall all the plates which do contain that which is holy writ. Now ye may suppose that this is foolishness in me, but behold, I say unto you that by small and simple things are great things brought to pass. And small means in many instances doth confound the wise. And the Lord God doth work by means to bring about his great and eternal purposes. And by very small means the Lord doth confound the wise and bringeth about the salvation of many souls. And now it has hitherto been wisdom in God that these things should be preserved. For behold, they have enlarged the memory of this people, yea, and convinced many of the error of their ways, and brought them to the knowledge of their God, and to the salvation of their souls. Yea, I say unto you, were it not for these things that these records do contain, which are on these plates, Ammon and his brethren could not have convinced so many thousands of the Lamanites of the incorrect tradition of their fathers. Yea, these records and their words brought them unto repentance, that is, they brought them to the knowledge of the Lord their God, and to rejoice in Jesus Christ their Redeemer. And who knoweth but what they will be the means of bringing many thousands of them, yea, and also many thousands of our stiff-necked brethren the Nephites, who are now hardening their hearts in sin and iniquities to the knowledge of their Redeemer. Now these mysteries are not yet fully made known unto me, therefore I shall forbear." And it may suffice if I only say they are preserved for a wise purpose, which purpose is known unto God. For he doth counsel in wisdom over all his works, and his paths are straight, and his course is one eternal round. Oh, remember, remember, my son Helaman, how strict are the commandments of God. And he said, If ye will keep my commandments, ye shall prosper in the land. But if ye keep not his commandments, ye shall be cut off from his presence. And now remember, my son, that God has entrusted you with these things which are sacred, which he has kept sacred, and also which he will keep and preserve for a wise purpose in him, that he may show forth his power unto future generations. And now, behold, I tell you by the spirit of prophecy, that if ye transgress the commandments of God, behold, these things which are sacred shall be taken away from you by the power of God, and ye shall be delivered up unto Satan, that he may sift you as chaff before the wind. 
But if ye keep the commandments of God, and do with these things which are sacred according to that which the Lord doth command you, for you must appeal unto the Lord for all things whatsoever ye must do with them, behold, no power of earth or hell can take them from you, for God is powerful to the fulfilling of all his words. For he will fulfill all his promises which he shall make unto you, for he has fulfilled his promises which he has made unto our fathers." For he promised unto them that he would preserve these things for a wise purpose in him, that he might show forth his power unto future generations. And now, behold, one purpose hath he fulfilled, even to the restoration of many thousands of the Lamanites to the knowledge of the truth. And he hath shown forth his power in them, and he will also still show forth his power in them unto future generations. Therefore they shall be preserved. Therefore I command you, my son Helaman, that ye be diligent in fulfilling all my words, and that ye be diligent in keeping the commandments of God as they are written. That the Lord will bear the arm of his power in bringing to pass the great restoration of the nations of Israel and their records, testifying of Christ, is certain. He will bring to light the knowledge of hidden things by means of seers, things that could not have been known otherwise, things that will confound the wise among men who, because of their learning, reject the things of God as foolishness. Indeed, he has already done so in many wonderful and marvelous ways. As we can clearly see now in bringing these things to light, Joseph Smith was called as a prophet of God, but even more, he was a seer and a revelator, a choice seer and revelator, preordained to come forth in the latter days to commence the great work of Jehovah in gathering his ancient covenant people from the four quarters of the earth. In his own words, known as the Doctrine and Covenants of the Latter-day Saints, formerly the Book of Commandments, the Lord Jesus Christ, speaking through the prophet Joseph Smith, commands all the world, but especially the Christian world, to listen to his message. Hearken, O ye people of my church, saith the voice of him who dwells on high, and whose eyes are upon all men. Yea, verily I say, hearken, ye people from afar, and ye that are upon the islands of the sea, listen together. For verily the voice of the Lord is unto all men, and there is none to escape. And there is no eye that shall not see, neither ear that shall not hear, neither heart that shall not be penetrated. And the rebellious shall be pierced with much sorrow, for their iniquities shall be spoken upon the housetops, and their secret acts shall be revealed. And the voice of warning shall be unto all people by the mouths of my disciples whom I have chosen in these last days. And they shall go forth, and none shall stay them, for I the Lord have commanded them. Behold, this is mine authority, and the authority of my servants, and my preface unto the book of my commandments, which I have given them to publish unto you, O inhabitants of the earth. Wherefore fear and tremble, O ye people, for what I the Lord have decreed in them shall be fulfilled. And verily I say unto you, that they who go forth bearing these tidings unto the inhabitants of the earth, to them is power given to seal both on earth and in heaven, the unbelieving and rebellious. Yea, verily, to seal them up unto the day when the wrath of God shall be poured out upon the wicked without measure. Unto the day when the Lord shall come, to recompense unto every man according to his work, and measure to every man according to the measure which he has measured to his fellow man. Wherefore, the voice of the Lord is unto the ends of the earth, that all that will hear may hear. Prepare ye, prepare ye for that which is to come, for the Lord is nigh. And the anger of the Lord is kindled, and his sword is bathed in heaven, and it shall fall upon the inhabitants of the earth. And the arm of the Lord shall be revealed, and the day cometh, that they who will not hear the voice of the Lord, neither the voice of his servants, neither give heed to the words of the prophets and apostles, shall be cut off from among the people. For they have strayed from mine ordinances, and have broken mine everlasting covenant. 
They seek not the Lord to establish his righteousness. But every man walketh in his own way, and after the image of his own God, whose image is in the likeness of the world, and whose substance is that of an idol, which waxeth old, and shall perish in Babylon, even Babylon the great, which shall fall. Wherefore, I the Lord, knowing the calamity which should come upon the inhabitants of the earth, called upon my servant Joseph Smith, Jr., and spake unto him from heaven, and gave him commandments, and also gave commandments to others, that they should proclaim these things unto the world, and all this, that it might be fulfilled, which was written by the prophets. The weak things of the world shall come forth, and break down the mighty and strong ones. But man should not counsel his fellow man, neither trust in the arm of flesh, but that every man might speak in the name of God the Lord, even the Savior of the world that faith also might increase in the earth, that my everlasting covenant might be established, that the fullness of my gospel might be proclaimed by the weak and the simple unto the ends of the world and before kings and rulers. Behold, I am God and have spoken it. These commandments are of me and were given unto my servants in their weakness after the manner of their language that they might come to understanding. And inasmuch as they erred, it might be made known. And inasmuch as they sought wisdom, they might be instructed. And inasmuch as they sinned, they might be chastened, that they might repent. And inasmuch as they were humble, they might be made strong and blessed from on high, and receive knowledge from time to time. And after having received the record of the Nephites, yea, even my servant Joseph Smith, Jr., might have power to translate through the mercy of God, by the power of God, the Book of Mormon. And also those to whom these commandments were given might have power to lay the foundation of this church and to bring it forth out of obscurity and out of darkness, the only true and living church upon the face of the whole earth, with which I, the Lord, am well pleased, speaking unto the church collectively and not individually. For I, the Lord, cannot look upon sin with the least degree of allowance. Nevertheless, he that repents and does the commandments of the Lord shall be forgiven. And he that repents not, from him shall be taken even the light which he has received. For my spirit shall not always strive with man, saith the Lord of hosts. And again, verily I say unto you, O inhabitants of the earth, I, the Lord, am willing to make these things known unto all flesh, for I am no respecter of persons, and will that all men shall know that the day speedily cometh, the hour is not yet, but is nigh at hand, when peace shall be taken from the earth, and the devil shall have power over his own dominion, and also the Lord shall have power over his saints, and shall reign in their midst, and shall come down in judgment upon Idumea or the world. Search these commandments, for they are true and faithful, and the prophecies and promises which are in them shall all be fulfilled. What I, the Lord, have spoken, I have spoken, and I excuse not myself. And though the heavens and the earth pass away, my word shall not pass away, but shall all be fulfilled, whether by mine own voice, or by the voice of my servants, it is the same. For behold, and lo, the Lord is God, and the Spirit beareth record, and the record is true, and the truth abideth forever and ever. Amen. Thus again we see the Lord bringing to pass a great separation of the righteous from the wicked, just as we saw in the record of Judah, the witness of Judah, in the days before the flood. He will gather out his people to Zion, as he did before the flood. And while they shall be safely gathered in, as wheat is gathered into the garners of the husbandman, the wicked, whether Jew or Gentile, will be left as tares in the field, all bundled up and ready to be burned at the return of the Son of Man in power and glory. In that day, the wicked, who refuse to repent, shall be destroyed from off the face of the earth by fire, as they were by water in the days of Noah. For they who come shall burn them, saith the Lord. The secret to survival, then, as always, is repentance. Men must repent and come unto 
the uh, Holy One of Israel, or they cannot be saved. To help us understand this in no uncertain terms, the Lord has given the Gentiles the Book of Mormon, another testament of Jesus Christ. By means of this book, containing the voices of those who have slumbered in the dust, speaking directly to us by way of dire warning, we learn that our beloved land of freedom, America the Beautiful, is a land choice above all others, and that those who possess it must serve the God of the land, who is Jesus Christ, or be swept off when they are fully ripe in iniquity. This is quite a different world view than the nations of the Gentiles hold today. The the, uh, United States of America is the most powerful nation on earth. It has been the envy of the world for its economic power and influence. As the leaders of the Gentile nations, it possesses the most advanced technology, the most political influence, and the most economic power in the world. Yet, the most important thing to recognize about this fact is that it is a direct result of the blessings of God, the God of Israel, upon the Gentiles, because of the faith which our forefathers had in him on account of the witness they had received of him in Europe, and con- uh, which was contained in the Holy Bible, which witness was the testimony of the Jews to them, and it was confirmed in their hearts by the Holy Spirit of truth. Because of this great faith which our fathers had in the God of the land, and because of his judgments upon his people, the former inhabitants of the land, who had rejected him, the Gentile nations of Europe and later elsewhere were led to this land, which is choice above all other lands. They were led here by the hand of God, and they were set up here as a free nation and became the greatest nation on the earth. The Lord showed the inhabitants, the ancients of this land, that this would be the case long before it came to pass. They had been led to America from Jerusalem, led to the American continent, the land of promise, by the hand of the Lord, before Jerusalem was destroyed by the Babylonians around 600 B.C. One of them, named Nephi, the faithful son of his father Lehi, the leader of this group, was shown the ultimate destiny of this choice land by an angel sent from the presence of God to instruct him. According to his record contained in the Book of Mormon, the journey to America by Columbus and its subsequent settlement by the Gentile nations was a deliberate act of the mercy of the God of Israel in bringing about his purposes, which, as we have seen, are to keep his covenant with Enoch that he would call upon the children of Noah so that he could preserve them and so that a remnant of them would remain among all nations so long as the earth should stand. The great part that America would play in the work of the Lord was not manifest much in the record of the Jews except in relatively obscure instances. This was because this part of the Lord's work, his strange work, pertained more to the tribe of Joseph. Therefore, an understanding of it was not had among the Gentiles in Europe and other places before the discovery of the New World by Columbus. Yet the Lord showed it in remarkable detail to the descendants of Joseph in America in order that it might eventually be manifest to the Gentiles through their testimony, after the fact, so to speak, in order to uh, test them and to try their faith in the latter days. In his record, Nephi uh, writes, And it came to pass that the angel spake unto me, saying, Look. And I looked and beheld many nations and kingdoms. And the angel said unto me, What beholdest thou? And I said, I behold many nations and kingdoms. And he said unto me, These are the nations and kingdoms of the Gentiles. And it came to pass that I saw among the nations of the Gentiles the formation of a great church. And the angel said unto me, Behold the formation of a church which is most abominable above all other churches, which slayeth the saints of God, yea, and tortureth them, and bindeth them down, and yoketh them with a yoke of iron, and bringeth them down into captivity. And it came to pass that I beheld this great and abominable church, and I saw the devil, that he was the founder of it. 
And I also saw gold and silver and silks and scarlets and fine twined linen and all manner of precious clothing. And I saw many harlots. And the angel spake unto me, saying, Behold, the gold and the silver and the silks and the scarlets and the fine twined linen and the precious clothing and the harlots are the desires of this great and abominable church. And also for the praise of the world do they destroy the saints of God and bring them down into captivity. And it came to pass that I looked and beheld many waters, and they divided the Gentiles from the seed of my brethren. And it came to pass that the angel said unto me, Behold, the wrath of God is upon the seed of thy brethren. And I looked and beheld a man among the Gentiles, who was separated from the seed of my brethren by the many waters. And I beheld the Spirit of God, that it came down and wrought upon the man. And he went forth upon the many waters, even unto the seed of my brethren who were in the promised land. And it came to pass that I beheld the Spirit of God, that it wrought upon other Gentiles, and they went forth out of captivity upon the many waters. And it came to pass that I beheld many multitudes of the Gentiles upon the land of promise, and I beheld the wrath of God, that it was upon the seed of my brethren, and they were scattered before the Gentiles, and were smitten. And I beheld the Spirit of the Lord, that it was upon the Gentiles, and they did prosper and obtain the land for their inheritance. And I beheld that they were white and exceedingly fair and beautiful like unto my people before they were slain. And it came to pass that I, Nephi, beheld that the Gentiles who had gone forth out of captivity did humble themselves before the Lord, and the power of the Lord was with them. And I beheld that their mother Gentiles were gathered together upon the waters and upon the land also to battle against them. And I beheld that the power of God was with them, and also that the wrath of God was upon all those that were gathered together against them to battle. And I, Nephi, beheld that the Gentiles that had gone out of captivity were delivered by the power of God out of the hands of all other nations. And it came to pass that I, Nephi, beheld that they did prosper in the land. And I beheld a book, and it was carried forth among them. And the angel said unto me, Knowest thou the meaning of the book? And I said unto him, I know not. And he said, Behold, it proceedeth out of the mouth of a Jew. And I, Nephi, beheld it. And he said unto me, The book that thou beholdest is a record of the Jews, which contains the covenants of the Lord, which he hath made unto the house of Israel. And it also containeth many of the prophecies of the holy prophets. And it is a record like unto the engravings which were upon the plates of brass, save there are not so many. Nevertheless, they contain the covenants of the Lord, which he hath made unto the house of Israel. Wherefore, they are of great worth unto the Gentiles." And the angel of the Lord said unto me, Thou hast beheld that the book proceedeth forth from the mouth of a Jew. And when it proceeded forth from the mouth of a Jew, it contained the fullness of the gospel of the Lord, of whom the twelve apostles bear record. And they bear record according to the truth which is in the Lamb of God. Wherefore, these things go forth from the Jews in purity unto the Gentiles, according to the truth which is in God. And after they go forth by the hand of the twelve apostles of the Lamb, from the Jews unto the Gentiles, thou seest the formation of that great and abominable church, which is most abominable above all other churches. For behold, they have taken away from the gospel of the Lamb many parts which are plain and most precious, and also many covenants of the Lord have they taken away. And all this have they done, that they might pervert the right ways of the Lord. As we read these words, it's as if a great veil was taken from our eyes as the truth of what really happened when Christ was crucified. Jerusalem was destroyed and the Jews were scattered <laughs> is laid before our eyes in plainness and simplicity. The precious truth that came from the Jews, such as Peter, James, and John, and Paul, to the world of the Gentiles, the Romans, the Greeks, the barbarians, etc. of the Western world was corrupted by a great and abominable church which was formed by the devil to torture and murder the saints of God, which it did for more than a thousand years. And well, we're out of time. Uh, we weren't able quite to finish the rest of the text, a couple of paragraphs uh, that remain, but uh, you can read that uh, on your own, or we'll talk a little bit about it tomorrow, but uh, 
we essentially uh, see here the, the will of God and our eyes are then open. So have a good day, everybody. And uh, as always, I pray that the Lord's choicest blessings will be with you all. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen.